Hello and welcome to today's webinar about the future of identity management for financial service providers. As always, we have a short teaser to um, have a quick and easy start into the topic and um, focus on some digital transformation topics which arise in the last days or weeks and years. Um, some statistics in the beginning 2019, 36% um, um, of financial service providers want to use AI and bots for campaigns and customer experience. 2019 also 49% consider customer service, product innovation and quality as one or as the competitive advantages in the financial service sector. In the future, 50%, so half of the financial service providers want to improve segmentation and targeted communication, which is especially related to personalized experience of customers, personalized or targeted communication with customers, and also personalized recommendations and offers to customers. Also, they want to um, 30, one third of the of the financial service providers want to create personalized real-time experiences, which especially also related to the targeted communication is one big thing in today's world. We all know that from retailers already, we get like personalized offers. We get like a nice and comfortable customer journey through all, throughout all channels. And that's the same what customers request or demand in the financial service sector itself too today. Having a look um, at my person, my name is Cedric Wiedmann. I'm Managing Director of Vidas ID. In my role as Managing Director, I'm responsible for the product roadmap of CDAS as Chief Product Officer. My background, I have a master in IT and global studies. My, my goal is always to develop digitized business models in that context, especially focusing on identity-based business models. So that also fits to our slogan, everything revolves around just one thing, identity. Having a look also at Vidas itself, we have, around, we have five branch offices, around 120 employees, and we have many projects successfully completed um, in the area of digitalization and with innovative technologies. But now coming to today's agenda, which is especially what we are focusing on today is the identity management. In the first step, we focus on the changes in the finance sector. Then we'll have a look at a customer journey um, in the context of a property insurance. And in, then we'll have a look at challenges, especially in context of identity management today. And finally, we'll um, finish the webinar with focusing on the customer identity nexus management, which features and functions a customer identity nexus management needs to provide um, for financial service providers. Let's start. Having a look at changes in the financial service sector itself. Um, we have in the past, we had the personal manual contact. We all know that in the banking sector um, to open an account in the past, we had to visit the bank branch um, or the local office, um, have a talk with the salesperson, service person in the local branch, and then we could open a contract. There were many signatures needed. Uh, we got a lot of text documents, probably also our passport or ID card was scanned um, by the bank. The same we have in the um, insurance sector, the salesperson, are outside contacting, calling um, customers, doing the contracts with them and all that. So I had really personal contact to, to a person. Often I also need to visit a local branch or local office of these people. In today's world, there was already a shift. So we still have the personal contact with the people, um, but not always in direct contact. So we're not always visiting the local branch. Um, it's also in a digital aspect. So. We go online, inform us about the digital offers of insurances, banks, other financial service providers. We'll get in touch with them online. We are in touch with the um, with our 
um, service um, partners, our salesperson, our contact person at the bank, at the insurance, also on digital channels. In the first step, that was email, but now more and more also other channels, video tools and others. We also complete um, at least part of the um, process, onboarding processes online. We all know even in the banking sector, we can open an account online, do some video identification maybe, or some other um, possibilities to confirm the identity. Same in the insurance sector, also there we can, or also in the in credit, um, when applying for a loan or credit, we also can do that um, at least partially already online. In the future, that will shift more and more so that the complete process can be fulfilled or can be completed, accomplished online. So I can open an account easily um, in the future also without video identification online. I can um, sign contracts, ensure I can sign any contract with an insurance company, also for a loan on online already. We already know platforms um, which offer loans online. Um, most of these are peer-to-peer -peer, um, loan platforms um, out there, but that will also change with also banks loan companies insurances will become more and more digital and the personal aspect it will still be there so we still want a personal contact but that will be um, completely driven by the digital processes and it's only supporting the digital processes or supervising the digital processes and not and um, the digital process supporting the personal contact in that aspect but in the future both sides are possible and both sides can be played Having a look at a customer journey and how it should be, how we call it, and that's not how it is today, but how it should be today, or at least in the near future. If we want to have a property insurance, for example, for any house or any other property what I own, and I can start online to a rate selection price calculator. I see I enter all the information what I have here about my house and um, often a lot of information is requested so I may skip it that's the um, red triangle what you see here so I may skip in between so I enter like location in my houses how many um, floors the house has but then I maybe in, um, stop in between because I don't have the time I want to finish it quickly and um, then I can offer the option that I have an easy onboarding so maybe a social login to save my current um, information, what I saved already to the calculator or to the selection process. There might be also options where I have a much easier and um, rough calculation at the beginning so that I just have to give like some um, basic data like location um, value or est estimated value, what I estimate myself and then I get already a first draft of the price calculation, and then I do an onboarding with maybe a social login or something else, or also an easy registration with just email, first name, last name, whatever. It might be really an easy onboarding here, not like it is today in the financial service sector, a full-blown registration process. And when I completed the um, price calculator, entered all information, and confirmed that this information is correct, then there's the ne next um, stop where I com um, start completing application data and then transfer the data also to the insurance company. That might be, um, especially in that context of property insurance, I filled in all my data about the property, but also all data about my personal information, billing address, um, birth date, all these information. And in that aspect, um, it's transferred to the to the insurance. There, there may be a validation, evaluation of the contract. We might also get a personal contact here. And then the next step is to sign a contract. So finishing or con concluding the contract here, then especially I have a signature. And in that aspect, there might be also then in the final step, um, an identity proof. Um, that can be as in today's world and video identification, but more and more it will be like um, an automated process based on big data and um, 
artificial intelligence technologies where we use like selfie fu um, functionality today. So we'll take a photo or video of our um, ID card or passport, take a photo of us ourselves, and also in combination then with the um, ID card together. And then we have a complete process and there's no need to have personal interaction with someone sitting in the video identification process or using any post identification process, mail order identification processes, which are in some European countries um, out there. So that's especially a change in the, in the, in the process. So it's automated and not um, leaded by a person, by a real person. Having a look, especially at the beginning where I mentioned that the onboarding is, um, can be really just some basic information. Um, that's a quite important feature um, which most of the financial service providers do not see today or only partially see, partially see today. It is important to not, not offer full-blown registration forms to customers because that prevents them to onboard. Um, what needs to be done is an easy registration process starting with context-based information coming, coming back to the property insurance in the beginning when the customer starts to fill in information about his property, he don't need to fill birth date, first name, last name, and billing address, phone number, and all that. Um, easy registration with email address or social login is um, completely sufficient. That's then a weak identity, as we see on the left side. And then during the process, um, maybe in further interactions, when further information is needed, for example, application data, then first name, last name, phone number, um, is asked for context-based, so I fulfilled all the property relevant information, then I start filling um, additional personal information, so completing my the next registration step, and then last, not always in the same time, I also maybe need to fulfill in completion of sales the identity proof, so saying it's really me as person identifying myself with an ID card or something, and then that's the progressive profiling in the process from a weak identity to a strong identity. That's not only um, in context of an insurance, it's also in the context of a bank. So loan or credit agreements, I, I need an identity proof. But it, we also know that from um, other sectors already, so e-commerce, I don't fill in the um, delivery address in the beginning, I maybe fill it in in the end. Also, I'm um, focusing on the identity and passport checks. As already mentioned um, in the past slides, um, that will change in the future. So my identity and passport check, so the know your customer process, as it is called in the financial service sector, um, in the context of an account opening, I scan my passport. That might be a photo or a video, probably a video, because we all need to recognize the watermarks and all that. Um, at least that's the approach how we do it in our solution. Um, we'll do a verification with the face recognition. Um, then we recognize the face itself, match the face with the um, face on the on the passport or ID card. We also do a lifeless detection in that aspect and for sure also match that the ID card is with the person. And then we do a confirmation of the message um, in the end. So we'll show um, it, um, the KYC process was successful. Your identity is, is um, proven now. We'll um, start the next steps and then we'll hand it over to the insurance or bank in that aspect. And that's basically an easy process because I don't need to have personal contact with a, per with a real person. The person is not telling me, okay, show me your passport, show me your face. Can you um, switch um, your um, passport um, to the next side and um, to the back side? In that process um, that's supported by the machine, no personal interaction, that makes it really easy and more, um, more easy to integrate into daily life. One other important aspect, especially in the European Union, but also in other areas of the world, is the consent management, what we need to take into account here. So in that aspect where we process the data of customers, we need to um, by law, clearly state the customer for what we need the 
data, how we use the data, how it is secured, and what we will do with the data in the future. That's in Germany or in European Union and based on the um, GDPR. Um, but there's also other reasons to give that. That might be internal compliance or data governance to be sure that the data is proper, it's still valid, um, it's up to date, but it's also an aspect of transparency. So if we show our customers in the financial service sector, our users, what we do with the data, how we use it, what reasons we have and what advantage also or what benefits the user is gaining by um, sharing his data with us, with the financial service providers, that will be a real big advantage. And then users are more willing to pass the data on if we show them easily and we give them the feeling that we store the data securely, but also give them the option to um, maintain the data themselves. Coming to the challenges which are there in today's world, we already um, have seen some um, during the customer journey, during the other features what we just demonstrated, which are quite important in the financial service sector today. Um, one big change is especially the customer experience in the financial service sector. So as mentioned, customers demand a good customer journey, a nice customer experience. Um, they want personalized um, offers, recommendations, personalized services here in that aspect. And that's they know all that already from streaming, e-commerce um, providers and different other sectors. And they also demand that now in financial service sectors and other more regulated sectors out there. We also have some legal aspects, which is in Europe, especially the Payment Service Directive 2, which is starting in the next month. Now, um, in that aspect, there are some new um, regulations or requirements towards strong authentication, um, also known as um, all the multi-factor options which are requested here, SCA, and also aspects in the context of um, the opening up the APIs, which is in the banking sector, the payment service directive, which is in the insurance sector, maybe BPRO as one of the um, things which are mentioned here. Um, one other change um, which already mentioned in the process is the move from the offline world to the online world. So as we have seen in the, in the process from the past to the future, um, in the past there was a lot of offline contact. Today, um, at least we'll get the feeling that some or partially process are moved to the online world but still there's a lot of offline contact necessary. Um, and that needs to change in the future because many people demand that and many people want to freely at any time do or consume the services, even from the financial service providers. In that aspect, um, especially in the financial service sector, there is um, uh, there, need, there needs to be considered the customer experience on the one side and the security on the other side. There needs to be a balance between the both of them. So as mentioned, customer demand, easy login, comfortable customer journey or nice customer experience. On the other side, they also want secure um, services and secure services are also required based on the legal situation. So this balance needs to be done, but that's, should, that's not as difficult as it sounds because in today's world, as mentioned, we can deliver a personalized experience and based on the personalized experience also focuses the security aspects on that. So in that aspect, especially fraud detection systems in the background can recognize abnormal behavior anomaly detections um, to recognize any anomaly in the user behavior and then react to it. So basically the customer experience can be really good and if there's any special um, anomaly happening or special situation happening, then the bank can in real time react to it by, for example, showing um, multi-factor authentication. In that aspect, um, all the financial service providers need to focus um, on the customer in the future because there are many competitors arising all over the world. There's also fintechs arising, insurtechs arising, 
think new regulations arising which are changing or which are shaping the future of the financial service sector in that aspect. Focusing on how this or how customer identity and access management will influence here. As we see on the pictures, um, there is on the one side the offline and the online world. So we'll need to interact with the user or the customer in different channels. In the offline world, field workers, brokers, local branch officers, as mentioned um, during the things, they will still be there in the future. And also the online world, so digital platforms that might be any loan platform, that might be also my own website or portal where or for any um, digital services. I want to do online sales. I have customer service portals and all that. So I need to recognize the customer or the person in the digital world. So in digital platforms and digital services, but also in the local world. And that all needs to be combined in a custom identity and access management system. So in the online world, as mentioned, I can have an easy login, biometric logins here to allow easy access to my apps, to my web portals. In the offline world, I can work with NFC beacons or other um, features to recognize customers and or identify customers and target them with personalized communication. Having a look at the functions which are necessary, especially as mentioned, user comfort. Comfort is a big thing which will be a huge focus and the, requires a huge change in the future. Um, I need to have comfortable logins. I need to have um, a single sign-on, a complete um, identification and recognition process of customers and users all over my portals. I will have the identity proof as mentioned will change as well. I probably will um, don't like not all or at least not all people want to have an identity proof via video identification. So I need to have other options offered here. I need to communicate or show transparent transparency in what I do with the data of the customers. So especially with the concept management and I need to use all data what I have to have like a personalized targeting a marketing perspective here, a perspective here so giving a good customer experience especially based on the data what i have to deliver personalized services and recommendations to the user a really important aspect in that which we didn't talk too much about today in the webinar is the group and identity management obviously identity management we target um, during all the webinar but the group management in that aspect needs to be considered. So also in the financial service sector, it's not or mostly not one person acting here. We'll have different persons. So that can be a family where um, man and wife have an um, account together or different accounts together, and they should be treated as a family, not as single persons. They should be treated as single persons, but in the context of the family, we'll have business accounts where big companies have different persons interacting here. And I, as financial service provider, I don't want to maintain the groups myself. So I'll transfer the administration of the groups back to the companies, back to the families, and they should invite people or persons which are allowed to um, access their accounts, their portals, their services um, as part of the group. And last, as mentioned already in the slide before, the real world identification. So I need to um, have an omni-channel approach, not only focusing on my channels in the digital world, also combining the digital and the real world. So I need to recognize the digital identity of my user and the real world identity of my users or customers to really target them um, omni-channel in a good personalized manner. As, as the last slide, we, as always, would like to have a short statement short appeal for you what should you do tomorrow so this was the webinar um, for the financial service providers today we have one more industry specific webinar which is the energy sector webinar um, next week you are free to join we are looking forward to see you in the webinar and our final webinar in beginning of september where we show our identity platform cedars as you see today's webinar was more focusing on the industry-specific industry context of the financial service sector. 
not focusing so much on CDAS itself, our, our identity platform. That will do beginning of September. So you are free to join, have a look at CDAS. And the second part is please to jumpstart. So it's really important to start with a topic, not only hear about it, read about it, but also to really start experience what advantages a custom identity nexus management can provide to your company. So start this card with us and our partners. And also we offer a CDAS free plan. So you can just sign up and use the free plan to experience what features we offer with CDAS and what um, features are offered within custom identity and access management system in general. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm looking forward to see you in our next webinar next week or in the final webinar beginning of September. Have a nice rest of the week and see you soon.